Okay, so you distributed both the three and the negative six, right? Is that what you said or no? No, I distributed the, um, the negative six. Okay, so you distributed the negative six, and you said you got what? I got negative six x. Negative six x, and then you said plus six? Yes. Yeah. Good, plus six. Excellent. Is plus six because a negative six times a negative one is positive, okay? What happens on the left side? Oh, yeah. You also distribute. You also distribute. So what did you get on the left? Mm -hmm. What is 3 times negative 2x? Negative 6x. So minus 6x. Yeah. Does anyone notice anything peculiar about this? Roy, what do you see? Ah, it's the same on both sides, okay? 6 minus 6x is the same as negative 6 plus 6. I'm sorry, negative 6x plus 6. So when we have this, or if you were to start to solve this, you would add 6x to both sides, and you would get 6 equals 6, because these would cancel, this would cancel. This is what we call an identity, how many solutions does an identity have? <laughs> Ray said one or infinitely many. It's infinitely many, okay? Because six equals six, how many times? All the time, right? If you ever get something that 6 equals 6, 7 equals 7, 9 equals 9, negative 2 equals negative 2, it doesn't matter what you plug in for x, it will always be a solution. So 6 will always be equal to 6. That's why there's infinitely many solutions. Okay, number 2. 3p plus 1 equals negative p plus 5. Who can walk me through this one? Roy, take me home. Plus what? Good. Mm-hmm. 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 Bye. Mm-hmm. What do I get? P equals one. How many solutions is this? Just one, okay? This is an example of just one solution. Okay, one solution. <clears throat> Oops. Number six. Number six. What do you think, Giancarlo? It's identity. Why? Walk me through it. Oh, no, 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 it's not, no, it's not. Walk me through it. What, what would you do first for number six? Minus V. Okay, so let's subtract V from both sides. What happens on the left side? Oh, well, it's no identity, or no, no solution. Five Maybe equals we'll negative five. Why is this no solution? Because they don't equal the same. Very good. Thing. If you ever get a number that is not equal to the other number, it is no solution. In no way, shape, or form can you have 5 equal to negative 5. What's up, Brioni? Um, 
All right, guys. So the reason we went over this is because today we are talking about systems of equations. We are going to have infinitely many solutions, one solution and no solution at different times. Okay. All right. Let's run through this lesson so we can get to our game. Okay. This is section 6.1, solving systems by graphing. Okay. So a system of equations is a bunch of different equations. And we'll talk about that. Carlos. Yeah, but you're not supposed to be doing that. Okay, this is put your name and our objectives. Our objectives are to solve systems of equations by graphing and to analyze special systems. So Rioni and Carlos, you guys better be writing all this down on a blank notability page because you are turning that in. Yes. What? Blank yes. So write it down on a blank piece of paper. In notability. Or in notes. Write it down somewhere. Go ahead and draw an X and Y axis. Draw a line in red and a line in blue that cross each other, okay? The point where they cross, we are going to label that as our solution. So when we graph solution systems of equations, okay, we're going to have two lines, okay, a red one and a blue one, but they don't have to be those colors. And wherever they cross each other, wherever they meet up is going to be a solution of the system of equations. So that means whatever the x value is, whatever the y value is, it's going to work for both of those equations, okay? And we'll see how that works in a second. Who needs more time on this slide? Okay, give you about a minute. Two or more linear equations form a system of linear equations. So whenever you have more than one, okay, linear equation, that's called a system of linear equations. An ordered pair that makes all of the equations in a system true is a solution of a system of linear equations. Okay, so your system of linear equations has one solution where both the equations are met. Okay. Okay, so take a look down below. <clears throat> Problem number one, solving a system of equations by graphing. Okay, so our red graph that you guys see on the graph paper is this x plus, or sorry, y equals x plus 2. Okay, so our red graph is y equals x plus 2. 
our blue graph is y equals 3x minus 2. y equals 3x minus 2. And this is what they look like when we graph them. Okay, The blue one has a y-intercept of negative 2. The red one has a y-intercept of positive 2. And they meet at the point 2, comma 4. This point, 2, 4. Okay? So when x equals 2 and y equals 4, both of those equations are satisfied. Okay? That means that when you plug in x equals 2 to the red one and y equals 4, it's going to hold a true statement. And when you plug in that same, those same values to the blue one, it's going to be a true statement. Okay? That's where the two, syst or the two linear equations intersect. And that's where we have um, they're, that they're both equal. Okay? All we're going to do is test that. Okay? So we're going to take the blue one, which is y equals 3x minus 2. We're going to plug in for y, 4. So we're going to do 4 equals, and then we're going to plug in for x, 2. 3 times 2 minus 2. What we're going to get here is 4 equals 6 minus 2, which is 4 equals 4. Does that work? Yes. Next one, let's do the red one. So we've got y equals x plus 2. We're going to plug in y equals 4 and x equals 2. So we're going to get 4 equals 2 plus 2. And we're going to get 4 equals 4. Does that work? Yes. <clears throat> So what this is saying is this is the one point where both of the equations share the same solution, okay? So take a look at the blue line, right? On our blue line, if we put a point down here at 1, 1, okay? That point, it does satisfy the blue line. So if we plugged in 1 for y and 1 for x, it would work for the blue line, but it would not work for the red line, okay? That's why the red line does not pass through there. If you plugged in 1 for y and x on the red line, it would not work. It would be 1 equals 3, which is not true. Okay? So wherever your solution is to the system is where those graphs are going to cross each other. Okay, we're going to do an example. So go ahead and switch over to the next slide. What is the solution of the system? Use a graph and then check your answer, okay? So we're gonna use the red for this one and we're gonna use blue for this one, okay? In red, we've got y equals 2x plus four. Is this in a form? If so, what form is it in? Ah, y equals mx plus b. Very good. What do we call that form? Slope intercept form. So since this is in slope intercept form, what is my slope of this line? Roy? Two. What's my y intercept, Janessa? Yep, 4. So we write it as a coordinate as 0, 4. Okay? Because remember, your y-intercept is whenever x is 0, what is the y-value? Okay, let's go ahead and plot this line. Okay? The first point that we know is where it crosses the y-intercept. So we're just going to plug in 0, 4, which is right here. And with a slope of 2... How are we going to plot another point, Roy? Okay, let's go up two and then one to the right. And let's make a third point. So let's go up two and one to the right. 
Let's draw a line through all of them. Um, and then let's graph our blue line, okay? y equals x plus 2. What form is this blue one in? It's in the same form, slope-intercept form. What's my slope? It's not x. 1. What's my y-intercept? 2. Or 0, 2. Let's put 0, 2. Are you sure they intersect? Hmm, let's see. Okay, so at 0, comma 2, that is going to be right here. The reason these are going to intersect is because their slopes are not the same. Whenever slopes are different, they will always intersect, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and how are we going to move? We're going to move one up and then where? One right. So plus 1, plus 1, because our slope was 1. So if we were to move down one, would we move left or right? Mm -hmm. Left, because it's a positive slope, okay? So if we move down, we have to move left. So here's our next point. And let's do one more, down one to the left one. Where do these two graphs intersect? Yep. At negative 2, comma 0. That is the solution to our system, okay? And you can always check it by taking x equals negative 2, y equals 0. If you plugged it into both of your um, equations, it would satisfy it. Okay, so if you plug in x equals negative 2, y equals 0 to the red one, you're going to get 0 equals 0. And the same thing if you plug it into the blue one, you'll get 0 equals 0. Roy? Is that just to check or do we actually have to do that? You don't actually have to do that, okay? That's just to check. And another question. So if you were to go to the blue, would you have to do No, because remember, these lines continue on forever. So even if you drew like your slope through like if you only plotted this point and then you went up another one, right? If you extended your line, it's still going to intersect with the red one. Yeah, what do you mean how? What I'm saying is these lines, they extend forever in both directions. So it doesn't matter which points you plot, as long as you draw your line straight enough, it'll go through the same points. So like this blue line, do you see how it doesn't go through anymore? We can always extend it further. We can always extend this one further. Does that make sense? We can always extend this one further. So when we're doing the equations, would you have this graph like two up and then go the opposite way and go down to check both ends to see like where it is? Yeah, or you can just like draw, I mean, you guys in Notability, you guys can draw a perfectly straight line, right? And then you can just find the point where they intersect, okay? Okay. And if it's ever like between two numbers, just put like 0.5, okay. all right? Okay, next question. All right, we are skipping problem number two. I want you to jump over to this slide where we're talking about system of equations that are consistent, independent, dependent, or inconsistent, okay? When a solution is consistent, that means that it is either independent or dependent. So it has at least one solution. A consistent system that is independent has exactly one solution. Only one. If they are dependent, that means that they have infinitely many solutions. Okay? 
And if they're inconsistent, that means that they have no solution. These are vocabulary words. You will need to know these. Consistent, independent, dependent, and inconsistent. Consistent means you have a solution. Independent means it's one. Dependent means it's infinitely many. And inconsistent means that there's no solution at all. Say it again. Nope, just one. Exactly one. A solution. So like, you know the, the examples that we just did? There, where there was only one point where they crossed? Yeah. That was one solution. Exactly one solution. Okay? So down below, I want you to draw three images, okay? With red and blue lines. This first one has exactly one solution, the black mark. One solution. Okay? It crosses at exactly one point, so we're going to have one solution there. The next one Will these lines ever cross? No. Why? Ah, they're parallel. So when it's parallel lines, they will never have a solution. Okay? When the lines are parallel, they will never have a solution. Let's say our red line is here and our blue line is the exact same line. Infinitely many solutions. Very good. Because they intersect all the time, right? There's infinitely many times that they intersect. So this one, last one is infinitely It's the same line. Okay? So when they intersect at one point, you've only got one solution. Those are the examples that we just did. When they're parallel, that means they have the same slope, but they're different lines. They never have a solution. And when it's the same line, they have infinitely many solutions. We're going to do these last two examples. So an example on parallel lines and infinitely many solutions. So you guys see what they look like. Okay. Who needs more time on this slide? All right. I'll give you guys another 30 seconds. Okay, so whenever the two lines are the same, infinitely many solutions. Whenever they are parallel, so they have the same slope, but they're not the same line, no solution. Okay. We're going to do an example. So what is the solution of each system in parts A and B? And use a graph. Describe the number of solutions. So let's take a look at A. A, we've got y equals negative x minus 3 and y equals negative x plus 5. So we're going to graph A, the first one, 
y equals negative x minus 3. What form is this in? Yep, y equals mx plus b, which is slope, intercept form. Okay, what is our slope here? Mm-hmm. What's our y-intercept? Or 0 comma negative 3? Just so we list it as a point, the y-intercept is negative 3. You're not wrong. So here's y, here's x. We know it must cross at 0 comma negative 3. So let's go down 3, put a point here. Negative 3. And our slope is negative 1. So if we rise 1 plus 1, we're going to move to the left 1 unit. So our point is going to be here. And we're going to rise 1, move to the left 1, rise 1, move to the left 1. So our line is going to look something like this. And our blue line will be negative x plus 5. y equals negative x plus 5. Same form. What's my slope? What's my y-intercept? Good. 0 comma 5. So at 0 comma 5, I'm going to plot a point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put a point here. And my slope, we said, was negative 1, so it's going to be the same slope as the other one. So a line that's parallel. So down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1. How many solutions does this problem have? Zero, no solutions, okay? No solution. Why is there no solution? Yeah, they never intersect. Why do they never intersect? Because they're parallel. How do we know that they're parallel? They have the same slope, but not the same y-intercept. Trick question, guys. If they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, how many solutions do we have, Anderson? Infinitely many. Why? Uh, because They're going to be the exact same line. Very good. So if your slope is the same but your y-intercept is different, we've got parallel lines, right? So no solution. If your slope's the same but you've got two different points, no solution. Question, guys. If you have different slopes, how many solutions are we going to have? One. Uno. Okay. So only do you have these crazy, like infinitely or no solutions when your slopes are the same. If your slopes are ever different, you're always going to have just one solution. Always, always, always. Questions? Okay. B is an example. I'm not going to do it, but you guys can do it. It's, it's an example of infinitely many solutions. Okay, because if you change the second equation into slope-intercept form, so you divide both sides by 3, you'll get the exact same equation for both of them. Okay, you'll get the exact same line. If you, yeah, so you would just graph one of them and just put this is the same line for both. But the, the reason we're doing this is because um, we want to see what it looks like graphically. So just make sure you're putting a graph for each question. All right, guys. It's time to find out who's paying attention, okay? 
This is our last slide, just a concept summary, okay? So it's just basically everything that we just learned in one slide for you guys to use, okay? So remember, when we have one solution, it's when the graph crosses each other at one point. Infinitely many is the same line, that's the purple one. And then no solution is when they're parallel, they'll never touch each other, okay? Let's find out who's paying attention, who wasn't, okay? So go ahead and open up GimKit after you submit these notes. So submit these notes, 